Hello guys, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. My name is Harry Tigansa Jingina, as you all know me. And today I'm going to be talking about the basic requirements to travel out of your country. As you know, the last time I introduced myself, but this time I'm going to be talking about those things you need when you want to travel out of your country. So if you want to get to know all these things, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and share my video so that other people can learn from. First of all, the basic requirement for traveling abroad. Uh, number one, we say you need to have a passport. The passport is the most vital uh, document which you require to travel. And this passport is called the international passport. Are identification documents that are issued to you by a government or governing authority for the purpose of international travel. This document, which is the international passport, is to certify the identity and citizenship of this particular individual to facilitate you to move from one country to another so when you are living in your country you first of all need this international passport okay people will ask this international passport is it the same everywhere we have basically two different types we have the diplomatic passport which is issued to diplomats and some most times their subordinates for their travel we also have the regular passport which each and every one of us which is aspiring to travel will need when traveling the regular passport is issued to you so as to identify yourself uh, when you are leaving your country the passport is the official property of the providing country it's a government property which means this passport even if issued to you can be recalled back by the government of your country it is not transferable to another person you cannot inherit a passport you cannot transfer a passport you cannot use the passport of your wife you cannot use the passport of your brother or you can even use your passport of your sister this document is valid for a period between five years to ten years in some regions we have what we call regional passports this regional passport allow people to travel within their regions without any harassment we have like in Africa we have the Eastern region passport regional passport which is used by countries like Tanzania uh, Rwanda Kenya Uganda and we also have the West African regional passport which is the ECOWAS passport which is used between the ECOWAS region within Nigeria Ghana Benin, Togo uh, which is also our regional passport the regional passport allows you movement within this region without no harassment without no visa within that region if you have that passport of that region you can easily travel within that region so the the basic thing which you need first of all to say is the passport the passport is valid and uh you know in africa we have two calendars the utopians they have their own calendar if you are from that region uh from that country per se because only Ethiopia uh, uses that calendar your passport uh validity should be with the regular validity so that you don't fly out of your country or on after getting your visa you're leaving to another country and then they're telling you the date is ahead of the one in Ethiopia so there's a big difference about uh, the passport coming from Ethiopia now, members. now we have the ordinary passport which every citizen of a particular nation goes to its immigration to process to use as a document for travel this is the document which all your details of travel would be put into now if you have a passport and you intend to travel how do you even get a passport you apply it from your immigration some passport takes just barely weeks and you can get your passport uh, some passports would take as long as six months for some countries which I know, uh, about 183 days for some countries. For some countries, there is no limited time, but minimum uh, two, three, four working days. Some might even have their own instantly given to them based on the immigration of your own country. So now you have your passports and you want to travel. Okay, what is the next step to take? If you want to travel out of your country and you have a passport, which you have as your document, you need to find out the country which you're going to. You need to contact uh, an agent or the embassy to find out how 
to get access into that country. To get access into a country, you need what is called a visa. You now have to apply for your visa, which is the second document to travel. The visa is a document which is the second most important thing when someone is going to embark on a journey out of his country. You are going to a country that is not your own country. You are not a citizen of that country. So first of all, like you do when you want to enter somebody's house, you need to knock on the door. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the visa is just like asking uh, for permission to enter into that country. A visa varies from country to country and there are two types of visas. There's a visa you apply for before you leave your country and there's a visa you get on arrival called visa on arrival. So if it's a visa you have to apply for before you leave your country, these are the things you need to do. You need a passport which is your document to uh, apply for this visa either directly or through an agent. Now if you're applying for this visa they will use the documents which that is your passport they will use the information in the given passport with your application fees differ from country to country now you apply for this visa or you apply online for the visa and wait for the approval of the embassy or the immigration of that country now if you start to process a visa with your passport they take all the documents this country will now either approve this uh, visa or not approve this visa and applying for this visa some would have to go through the embassy of the or the consulate of that particular host country which you are going to or through an agent which can who can also process this visa for you depending on the mode of application of visa for the country which you are going to so if you are going to be applying through an agent then there is a particular period of time which you have to wait for this visa to be approved this visa can be approved sometimes between uh, two days three days and going forward depending on the country which you are applying for uh, their visa to travel now the visas come in three different types we have what we call the student visa we have the resident visa and we have the tourist or visit visa now, student visa it could be valid for a period of a year or two years or depending on your uh, the course which you're going for and how long you'll be staying now we have the resident visa which allows you to stay for a particular number of years approved by the government of that host country for you to stay in that country uh, that that is also the resident visa now the tourist visa which is the most sorted after visa by people because they're going on tourism or business uh, most times to go back and return uh, is the third type of visa which actually does not have a very long period so if you have this visa and whichever of them you have uh, you are set on your journey now visa apart from just getting the visa it has validity now the validity like I said depends on the number of months or the number of years which you have been issued uh, for your stay in that uh, country provided to you now visa could either be given to you before departure or visa can be given to you on arrival in the country so before you process the visa you need to know what kind of visa you need for what country you are going for if you are going to a country that is a visa on arrival for your national passport then you have to just start to jump the visa and go to the third item but if your country is not visa on arrival for a carrier of your country national passport then you have to process your visa before you take your flight at the point of arrival in the other country so if you have your visa you know that okay this is like 90 percent access to the country which you're going to now that's what you need also which is the third thing i'm going to be talking about which is the third most important thing you need to get if you're traveling you need a ticket a ticket could be based on the mode of transportation are you traveling by air are you traveling by rail are you traveling by uh, road or are you traveling by sea so whatever mode of transportation you're using you have to access your ticket 
if you're going by your car, which is different, maybe inter-border, from one border to another border, it could be understood. You have to have uh, your means of transportation, which in general we call the ticket. Now you purchase your ticket. Some countries, you have to have a return ticket before you are allowed into their country because you're going in depending on what you're going for. If you're going on tourists, you must have a return ticket to go into that country. If you're going for education, a one-way ticket will do. If you're going on employment, uh, you would need a, a one-way ticket also. But if you're going on tourists or visit, you will need a return ticket to prove to this uh, country or the immigration of that particular country which you're going to that you're only traveling just for your visit and immediately after your visit you're going to depart before you exceed your stay in that country that is the third basic thing which you require to travel there is the fifth thing which you need the fifth thing which you need is your travel allowance now you have accommodation you have uh, your visa you have your passport you have your air ticket you need to have this thing BAT in short called uh, basic travel allowance your basic travel allowance is the money which you take along with you when you're traveling if you're traveling to a country you don't expect that when you get to the country uh, people will start to give you money or you start to beg or you start working immediately whichever it is you need to have something on you which you travel Basic travel allowance is generally uh, between $500 and maybe above for some countries, but minimum $500 is your basic travel allowance if you are traveling out of your country. So you need to have that thing called the basic travel allowance. Sometimes when you get to the immigration, they might not ask you. So it differs from persons to persons. You might not be asked, but you should have it in case you are asked because it's called cover for your expenses which include shopping uh, it also includes your, your uh, shuttling around you know here and there buying your some souvenirs and so on and so forth you know just getting settled wherever you are you know so you cannot tell me you intend to travel to a country and you're going empty-handed you should have some kind of uh, money uh, which you know that no matter what happens you can sustain yourself for some time before you can get even help or assistance from any other person so you need to have some money with you uh, when you are traveling if you are there and you have not subscribed to this channel you need to subscribe to this channel because there's still information coming your way don't leave this topic because we have not concluded there's so much to talk about you have to wait till the end of this topic and then you can know the remaining things which you need to have uh, when you're traveling out of your country now an accommodation you cannot be traveling somewhere and not have an accommodation if you're traveling you need where to stay and evidence of a hotel booking or a residence where you will be staying so you need to provide an accommodation this is to say you're not just going to become a nuisance on the street in the particular country which you're going that's the fourth basic thing you need for some countries, it is a must that you must provide proof of residence or accommodation before you are ac accepted into the country. Yet the fifth motel, most important thing, like I said, is that accommodation. Accommodation could be a hotel booking, it could be a reservation of an apartment, it could be a hostel where you will be staying. It is expected that when you are traveling you should have a location where you're going to and a reservation or an address to where you will put up you cannot be traveling without any place to stay this has made some people to be deported right from the airports on arrival to say their inability to say exactly where they are going to so if you family arise if you're using an agent at least he should give you like uh, some tips about uh, how to express yourself and how to uh, location about where you're going to be staying you should make your reservation or you should actually have an address or have a contact with somebody who is even coming to pick you at the airport a phone number an address an identity number or something something that can actually relate uh, to you going to stay with somebody we are going to be talking about uh, one thing called uh, the health insurance. 
this before this pandemic it was something that was negligible before the coming of uh, COVID-19. It was something that people travel without having. But due to COVID-19, it is a requirement that you should have your health insurance, either a travel insurance or a general health insurance before you travel. Some countries have their own particular health insurance, which you need to secure before you can travel. What is this health insurance? A lot of people keep asking. This insurance cover uh, covers you in case, if it is COVID health insurance which you have, in case you travel and you are caught up with COVID, you fall sick, you can go to the hospital covered by the COVID insurance. Some even go to the extent that even if you travel and you lose your life, uh, this insurance will cover even taking your corpses back to your home country. It also covers, for, in some cases, the loss of passport. You lost your passport, they can give you some certain uh, amount of money which you can now use uh, to process a new passport. So the insurance, the health insurance vary from uh, country to country, from company to company, insurance agency to insurance agency. So whichever ones you get, uh, this insurance is supposed to cover you for the period of your stay, which if it is a three months visa, the insurance should cover you for completely the period of your stay until you return back home. Some airlines also have the insurance cover. So buying your ticket with some airlines comes with an insurance cover. So that is for the health insurance. For then we go to the last but not the least. Uh, before now, like I said again, before COVID, uh, all you just needed was uh, a yellow fever vaccine, uh, which you take with you. Now you also need to have a PCR negative test. That is a COVID negative test. This test must be done or uh, taken by a hospital which is approved to take international uh, COVID tests for the uh, for those who are trying to embark on a journey. So you need to take a, a COVID test, a PCR test, uh, some few days before you depart. For some countries, it's between uh, 46 hours to some 96 hours is validity for you to travel so you can travel out of your country so you need to have a covid uh, negative test the test is taken and the um, result most times is shared electronically to you and also sometimes to even uh, uh, the software online where the airline can even verify if you have taken the test or not so you need to take that covid uh, negative test before you take your flight and also uh, if you are not taking the test, that means you must have been vaccinated. You must have taken the COVID vaccine and you have a certification that you have taken this vaccine. So you can travel while observing the COVID uh, rules and uh, regulations. Uh, you should also wear your mask uh, in this day. Uh, you should also keep the social distance while uh, taking your journey. So if you have all this in place, you are now set for your journey. Any other thing that you'll be taking with you, the clothes, the food, whatever, are add-ons. But the most important thing are these seven great things if you want to embark on a journey. So I will be going in-depth with you on any one of these topics if you want to go. Uh, okay, uh, so if you're there and you have not subscribed to this channel, you need to subscribe to this channel because there's still information coming your way. Don't